Today I'm gonna to talk to you about doing my first plein air event and give you some tips and insights into what that's like. I also wanna acknowledge, I know I've been away for a while and I'm gonna to talk to you about why that is. I'm really excited about it. I'll talk to you about it at the end of the video. So coming up next, we're gonna talk about doing a plein air event. So this was, as I mentioned, the very first time that I have done a plein air painting event and I kind of equate it to people like doing your first marathon. Uh, different plein air events will be across the country. They all are slightly different, but in general, you go to a location and you're gonna be painting for about a week with a bunch of other artists. And then um, it's kind of in the public and it'll be advertised. And so people will know about your painting. They might come up and watch you. And then at the end of the event, you have a big sale where people can purchase your paintings and uh, it's just a great way to meet other artists and network with people, but also to build your skills and get experience. A lot of times as well, there will be prize, cash prizes awarded by a judge or a panel of judges to uh, give awards for some of the better paintings. So the plein air painting event that I did is, to my knowledge, the only event in Nebraska. This is called Auburn Strokes. And this was the second year that they had it. And I have to say, I really didn't know what to expect. I was kind of nervous. You might be nervous too if this is your first time. But uh, what I would encourage you is just go in with an open mind. Don't be too nervous because everyone's kind of in the same boat. And I, what I would say is, you know, don't think of it as a competition and definitely don't think about comparing yourself to other artists. It's more about the experience and you're in a new location and it's, it's a really cool thing. So I got, I drove to Auburn. Auburn is about an hour away from Omaha where I live. So I drove to Auburn, I was very excited. That first night you kind of have a checking in process. I got this awesome swag bag full of stuff, a t-shirt, they give you a badge so that, you know, when you're out painting, people can kind of see and know, oh, that guy's one of the painters, not what's that hillbilly doing out on my driveway? So that was really much appreciated and it really makes you feel like things are very official. So I really love that. And um, when, when I checked in, they have a process where you have to bring all of your surfaces that you're gonna paint on to get stamped so that you're really painting on official things. This is kind of a safeguard against somebody who might cheat by bringing maybe a studio work and trying to pass it off as a plein air piece. So by having all of your surfaces stamped, it's kind of like everybody is starting from the same starting point. And then you know that everything that you painted was actually painted during the plein air event. So you go in and one thing that I thought they did a really awesome job because you're in a new location. I've never been to Auburn. I guess I had been to Auburn one time before, uh, but not really knowing the area. They gave you maps of the area. They also had a long list of uh, recommended painting places that, you know, from different historical sites and beautiful parks to uh, just houses in the neighborhood and parts of the town that were kind of paint worthy. And I really appreciated that because as you know, I'm sure for most of you, one of the hardest things to do as a plein air painter is to figure out what am I going to paint? They really helped a lot with that. So once you get checked in and everything, we were pretty much free to paint. So I went around Auburn and uh, it's kind of uh, near a rural, it's sort of a rural community. And so they had a, some big granaries on the edge of town that I thought were amazing. So I set up uh, right there to paint. I really liked the strong light and shadow that were on the, this, this sort of grain uh, silo as it were. And uh, I started to get down to business. Um, it was really hot. I tried to set up my umbrella so that it would kind of block the direct sun and it was really windy and immediately my umbrella broke. So I knew I'm gonna be painting without an umbrella for the whole week. Uh, it was a little bit of a rocky start, but actually ultimately I really liked how this painting turned out. Um, and I can just really feel that sense of light and the sound of the grain elevators and the wind and the sun on my face. It's really tattooed in my mind and I really liked how this painting turned out. At the end of that painting session, then they had a workshop with Deborah Joy Grosser, who was the judge for all the paintings. And she was giving a little workshop slash clinic that evening. So we kind of all met up at this park. They had sandwiches and chips for all of us. We all kind of met all the other artists. And then 
uh, Deborah Grosser gave this awesome plein air uh, presentation where she painted a scene. We could watch her and ask her questions. She's a truly incredible, incredible painter. Um, she's been featured uh, by Plein Air Magazine. Uh, she recently did a um, tutorial video for them and uh, she does workshops and everything. She's also the president of the American Impressionist Society. So I felt too, truly honored to get to meet her, to get to see this incredible artist paint. And I think one of the coolest things was just how friendly and kind and generous she was with her time. Um, she wasn't, you know, unapproachable, but just, you know, would come up to you and, and, and talk to you. Actually, I think she came up to me and introduced herself to me first, you know, which I wasn't expecting at all. So truly, truly a wonderful lady. If you get a chance to check out her DVD or just go to her website and look at her works, she's a fantastic artist. And uh, that was a true highlight to get to see her paint, to see a master artist paint um, I'm sure a lot of you are in the same boat as me. Uh, you know how you paint and you know, you, we go online, we look at how other artists paint, but there's really just something about seeing it done in person. I could see exactly the scene she was painting. I could see her palette. I could see what she was putting on this canvas. And if I had a question, I could ask her. So man, that was just, it was truly awesome. Yeah, day two, I'm going to Peru State College today to uh, to paint, so we'll see what we can get done. Now, one thing that was really cool, and I don't know if every plein air event does this, but one thing that was awesome that they did is they had some specific locations that you would sign up for. So on one of the days, I signed up to go to historic Peru State College, which has one of the oldest colleges, I believe, in Nebraska. They had an old schoolhouse that they taught to teach people how to become teachers and it's grown into this whole college system. So I went out there to paint the schoolhouse, the red brick schoolhouse at Peru State College and that was a really beautiful location. One of the things that they had for Auburn were different categories that your art would be judged. You had what they called the best of show which would have a first, second, and third place and those were going to be judged by Deborah Joy Grosser. They also had a category that was called Best of Auburn, which was kind of the best scene that encapsulated the town. And I thought, I'm, I didn't know if I would really have a shot at best out of show, but, uh, and, I, and I really didn't know the quality of the work of the, of the artists, you know? So I kind of felt like I'm probably not gonna be the best painter here, um, but I thought, you know, if I aim for that best of Auburn, if I do a bunch of paintings of the town, I might have a shot at that. So that was kind of tucked away in my mind as one of the categories I wanted to aim for. A couple of the other categories were um, the artist's choice. So all of the artists in the event at the end got to vote for what painting they thought was the best. And then there was what they had called the people's choice. And all the townsfolk of Auburn could come to the sale at the end of the show and vote for their favorite painting. So those are the four categories. They all had cash prizes attached to them. I really wasn't expecting to win anything, but I thought, you know, if I'm gonna compete or I'm gonna try for something, I'm gonna aim for Best of Auburn and we'll see where the chips lie. You know, I think it's good to focus on a strategy, like have a single goal for yourself. This I think would be really good. I recommend this for any plein air time that you're going out, have a specific goal set in mind. And for me, my goal for this plein air event was to focus on composition. So um, I was looking for good compositions and really by thinking about composition instead of the most beautiful subject or whatever, you can make anything beautiful by having a great composition. As I talked about in my last video, I've been learning a lot from Ian Roberts' book, which if you haven't read it, I will link it down below in the description. You guys should check it out. But he talks a lot about paint a composition, not a subject. And I couldn't find anything that tickled my fancy until I turned around and I started, you know, cropping with my hands to think of what's a good scene that I could do. And I found what I thought was a really cool composition of this building. There's some grain elevators and trees in the background. And so I painted that. Uh, I was trying to beat the rain. It wasn't the best painting that I've ever done, but it felt good to get another painting done. The following day, I really had my mind set on kind of the main drag in Auburn. I'm like, I wanna do this iconic scene of Auburn to try and kind of toss my hat for that best of Auburn. And I gave myself plenty of time. I wasn't even worried about doing two paintings that day. 
and I really focus on this scene. Now the funny thing is Auburn is a, is a small town in the middle of Nebraska, but I think they were rerouting some traffic from the interstate due to construction. There was so much traffic, especially semis, just whizzing by me as I was painting. I kid you not, it was louder than Manhattan. It was so loud. Uh, truckers would drive up and go, ar, ar, and I would look up at them and they'd be like, good job and everything. And I had so many people who saw me, they would go, oh yeah, I saw you painting. I'm like, you did? But of course, I was in kind of the center of town at this intersection where all these cars and everything, so I'm sure that pretty much everybody in town saw me. And there was just this awesome building, old architecture. You, you kind of see this architecture from a bygone era. And I, the best way I can describe it is it's almost like a turret that they had. Um, I forget what it's actually called, but it almost looks like a castle turret attached to the corner of this building. And it just seems so idiosyncratic and beautiful and representative of Auburn. So that's what I decided to paint. And I pretty much spent the entire day painting this painting. I put everything I had into it and uh, I was totally physically, mentally exhausted by the end of it, but I really, really loved how this painting turned out and, um, and it was a really fun one. So at the end of that day, I, again, I wish that I would have probably stayed in Auburn instead of driving back to town because I drove back, it started pouring rain, and then I got a flat tire and I had to change my flat tire, but it was truly a blessing. The rain stopped, I got my flat tire, I got out, changed the tire, and then the rain started again. So I felt like I was really lucky to have that shake out the way that it did. I got a new tire in the morning and drove back to Auburn. And on the last day of painting, or the next to last day rather, uh, I signed up to go to a kind of a neighboring town uh, next to Auburn that had a park. And we signed up, I signed up for that location. So it was cool to know like there's gonna be different artists at each location. Uh, although I will say, I think there were six or so artists at Peru State College and I never saw another person. Uh, when I went to uh, Coriolis Park and painted the chapel there, I did see one other painter. So I think in my mind, not having done this before, I thought that it was gonna be a lot more social than it was. And it probably could have been, um, but for the most part, I was kind of on my own the whole time. I didn't really see a lot of the other artists, but I do know some of them went out together to paint. So if you're going to a plein air event, you know, if you're doing it with a friend or someone you know, I think that's a great way to do it. If you don't know anybody, uh, you might even just ask to tag along if you like that. But honestly, I'm so used to painting on my own anyways that it kind of just felt like normal, which was kind of nice. So the last location that I painted was this really cool park. Um, it was a notable family that had come and settled in Nebraska. They even had their original home, which was a wagon. And they had sort of dedicated their lives to serving God. And I think that they had made um, quite an impact on the local community. And throughout the years, they built sort of uh, an area on their property. They had a chapel and uh, a little tiny museum filled with artifacts that represented the county. And um, I think they had maybe, you know, they had a little, it's, it's, it's a little park, but it's like a private park. Um, and so it was really, truly, truly unique. I've never seen anything like it, um, but it was really incredible. And so I went to paint this chapel and the thing that I did this time that was a little bit unique was painting with gouache on a panel. And I was using these ampersand uh, water color panels, aqua boards, I believe they're called. And um, it, was, it was really challenging. I painted uh, for quite a while. I took a break. I drove around looking for, um, I thought I was done, but I wasn't really happy with how the painting turned out. I drove around looking for another composition somewhere else to go. And I thought, you know what? I don't have to be done. I can keep working on this painting. So I went back to Coriolis Park and continued to paint, changing some of the values and things like that. And by the time I was done, uh, really the day was done and we had to kind of hightail it back to, uh, this park where we met to turn in all of our paintings framed and wired, ready to be hung for the contest and to be judged. So uh, I had a little bit of a, an adventure making sure I got back on time, uh, but it turned out everything turned out all right and I submitted all of my paintings. And then that night we had a dinner with all the artists to kind of privately receive word about who was winning prizes and things like that. To my surprise, 
I won Best of Auburn. And it was a true honor uh, to get that award. Um, and I, I wasn't expecting it at all. Once I got there actually, and I started seeing the, the work that other people did, I was tr truly blown away. Every artist was incredible. And uh, so that was just a true humbling experience. The next day we had the sale where the public was invited to vote on their favorite paintings as well. And we had a, a concert, um, Daniel Christian played. I, I go way back with him, we have a connection. When I used to play music, we would play together. Uh, there was food and, and it was just an awesome time and people came and then you know, you're hoping that people will buy your paintings. Well, again, it was so cool. Uh, to sell three of my paintings, uh, including the Best of Auburn one, and I also sold the painting that I did of uh, the church at Corellis Park and one other one. So it was incredible to sell three paintings. It was incredible to um, walk away with some prizes. But most of all, most of all, I want to thank uh, Leslie, who put on this event in Auburn, and all the other artists that I got to rub shoulders with and meet and chat and learn from. And I want to thank Deborah Joy Grosser for being so generous and kind and uh, really sharing her knowledge and experience and giving somebody like me who is relatively new to this and inexperienced a little bit of a taste and some insight into the life of a, of a true a professional artist. So I would say this, if you have a chance, if you're in the United States and you have a chance to do Auburn Strokes, do it. It's not too intimidating. The people are incredibly nice. It's a beautiful town. They run an exquisite event. Um, it costs $30 to register and it was really one of the best experiences of my life. I think even if I hadn't sold any paintings or won any awards, it still would have been a truly amazing experience. And even if you don't come to Auburn Strokes, I would say look uh, for plein air painting events in your area. I know plein air magazine issues them um, in their magazine and especially at the beginning of the year, they'll start talking about different plein air events. So you can go to their website and look for that or buy their magazine, uh, subscribe or buy it uh, at your local Barnes and Noble or what have you. And you can start to see where some of these plein air events take place. If there's one in your area, I would, I would recommend doing it. Just like, you know, you might do a marathon or a 5K or a 10K and you know, without the expectation to win, but it's more about doing it than it is about winning. And to me, it was just one of the highlights of my year and such a cool experience. So I wanted to share that guys with you. So that was an awesome experience. I wanted to share that with you guys and just encourage you to do plein air events if you get a chance to, and definitely check out Auburn Strokes if you get the chance to do that. I also wanted to mention why I've kind of been a little bit more sporadic with my videos and you haven't heard from me. A lot's been going on in uh, my life. I need to spend some time with family and do things like that, as well as just being really busy with work. The thing that I'm really excited about is I'm going to be launching a new series here on YouTube that's going to be 15 videos long covering uh, urban sketching, plein air painting, the city that I grew up in, exploring the history of Omaha, Nebraska. I've been doing all kinds of research, finding historical landmarks, sketching them, painting them, and trying to tell the story of where I come from and where I live. I'm so excited for this. Um, it's gonna be the biggest project that I've ever done on YouTube, and I just can't wait for you guys to see it. So this series is coming up soon. I'm working on editing the videos and getting everything ready for you guys. I can't wait for you to see it. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified as soon as the series launches. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm going to be hyping this so that we're all ready for it, uh, but it should be happening soon. And um, the goal is to release a video daily for, for two weeks uh, talking about this journey that I went on with urban sketching and plein air painting. And I just, I can't wait to share these videos with you and uh, I hope that you get something out of it as well. So love you guys. Hope that you're inspired. Can't wait to see you for this series. Remember you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time. Every sketch tells a story, but what story are we telling? Behind every building and every city block lies a secret of history. 
but do any of us really know what it is? I'm embarking on the biggest project I've done to date, exploring the hidden history of the city I grew up in, trying to learn the story of where I came from and where we're going. With my sketchbook in hand, I'll take you through a series of plein air sketches looking to discover the history of Omaha, Nebraska. By sketching its historic landmarks, I'm going to go on a journey to discover tales of crime and heroism, tales of victory and tragedy. Will you come along? We're telling the story of Omaha. Subscribe so that you don't miss an episode.